Welcome to NFL Imperialism 6. Spin the wheel for selection and direction, and attack or expand until you're the last on the land. However, for this episode, we have a problem, because as you can see, there's not a single team on the map. It's just empty white spaces. And that's because if you're competent to read the title, you understand that this is randomized edition, meaning every NFL team will start on a random state. So this is how we're going to assign teams to a state. As you can see right here, I have a program which has two separate lists. In the first list, you have every single contiguous United States. There's 48 in total excluding Alaska and Hawaii. And in the second list, we have every single NFL team. Now, what's going to happen here is that it's that this program will assign a random unique order for all these teams to be assigned with a certain state. Now, I'm not going to go through and read all these out to you. I'll probably just scroll through it and I'll just mention the kind of funny ones. Like, like this, the Vikings are going to New York, the Jets going to Tennessee. I didn't know this state existed, but apparently the Giants are going to it. And we might have a couple funny ones like this. The Niners are going to Rhode Island. Literally, Rhode Island is probably smaller than my backyard. And all the states right here with asterisks next to the name, they didn't get a team so these will be the empty territories for this video as you can see some weird ones like pennsylvania new jersey california and texas both have no teams this video that's going to be really weird and a common problem we have in imperialism is that because there's so many teams grouped up in same states like california especially florida with the three teams it's going to be really good for these teams because they don't have to fight each other to get out of their own state every team has their own individual state for this video so here is the map reveal now i'm going to leave this up for a couple minutes but while i'm talking i want to see if you guys can recognize one thing on this map there is one NFL team that did not switch states. They're still in their same state. Can you figure it out? If you haven't, it's the Kansas City Chiefs. But let's talk geography for a second. Considering looking at the Pacific Northwest and out west, it is a cluster. I mean, there are teams everywhere. We're used to having like no teams in this area, but now you can see states like Montana, Idaho, even South Dakota have teams on them. Same kind of goes for the South. We're not used to having this many teams down here. It's kind of weird not having a team in Florida and also not having a team in Texas and California to mention. But even looking at the South, ranging from Louisiana to North Carolina, there's a team in every state. And probably what I'm most interested in is the Northeast around the New England region. As you can see, there's quite a couple of teams here. We're not really used to this. We're only used to having New York teams and the Patriots, but now you can see the Vikings and Panthers. And for all the other teams, I just couldn't fit their logo in there. But you know, in Vermont, you have the Patriots and Massachusetts Cowboys, Rhode Island Niners, and Connecticut, the Jaguars. And then same goes for Delaware and Maryland, who have both the Eagles and Steelers. So in total, we have 16 unoccupied states, which is open territories, which leads us to our next discussion our power-ups. So now let's go over the power-ups we have today. We have the same ones as always, the basic necessities. We have Afterlife, Bandit, Clone, Double Trouble, Rewind, Juice, Gambler, and a new one for the eighth one today, Evolved. So now it's time to roll for our power-ups to see what states will be placed on. Our first one will be the Juice power-up. Juiced is going on the state of Iowa. Next up on the wheel is Double Trouble. DT will be going to the state of Texas. Six more to go. We have the new one, Evolved. I'll tell you what this one does once we get there, but it's going to go on the state of Kentucky. Next on the wheel, we have the powerful clone. And the clone power-up is going to the state of Florida. Four more to do, we have Afterlife up next. The second life power-up of Afterlife will be going to Arkansas. Then we continue with the Gambler power-up. Gambler has been reworked, and it's going to go to the state of Kansas. Two more to do, we'll have the Rewind power-up. Rewind is going to Illinois. And our final power-up, which is Bandit, will be going to no other than North Dakota. And now our eight power-ups are placed on the map, and I want to bring your attention back to the Kansas City Chiefs because they have not one, not two, but five power-ups sharing a border with them. This is insane. If the Chiefs get caught upon at all in this video, it's basically a 100% chance they get a power-up. But anyways, I'm excited. This is the craziest map I've seen in a minute. Let's begin turn number one. Oh, and one more thing which I didn't mention yet. Expansions now give a player from any eliminated team in the past. I'm calling it the pool. So once a team gets eliminated, their players join the pool and expansion for a different team can add that player to the roster. Anyways, let's begin with turn number one, which will start with the New England Patriots. Patriots actually didn't really move too far in this video, and it looks like they're going to go up north. Okay, so usually we go through the center of the logo to determine the arrow placement, but considering it cannot fit the Patriots logo in New Hampshire, it's going to go up north, but it still comes in contact with Maine, which is the Carolina Panthers. Also, I believe I said the Patriots were in Vermont. That's actually wrong. They are in New Hampshire, which means going north, they'll be playing Maine. So our first game is the Panthers and the Patriots. Starting off strong in game one, we're already in overtime. Both teams have already had a possession, so it's first to score at this point right now. I have no clue what kind of play call this is, but oh, it works? Okay, Adam. I'm dealing with a first down. Okay. Also, if you notice something, this is in Carolina. Even though the Carolina Panthers are not located in Carolina anymore, they're actually in Maine. We're still going to be playing at the home site that they actually play in real life. But here's a handoff to Miles Sanders. Getting a little shifty for the first down. Yes, he will. Can he break one tackle? No, he cannot, but he makes it across midfield to the 48. Three points will knock the Patriots off the map. They're already going to have another first down here with Miles Sanders. Two runs and one pass with Adam Thielen's already got him to the 36. With zero timeouts, we're running empty formation for the two-yard line, which is really stupid, but you know what? Let's get a passing touchdown to Miles Sanders. 
Alexander. Sure enough, that works right there. The Carolina Panthers will win the first game in Imperialism number six in overtime. And that leaves our first player acquisition for this video to be Matthew Judon, the left outside linebacker. So we have a successful defense way up north from Maine to New Hampshire. And this leaves our first team to be eliminated, the New England Patriots. Turn number two will continue on with the Miami Dolphins, who thankfully aren't in Miami anymore because that screwed them in every single episode. Matter of fact, the Dolphins are in a completely different location geographically. They're in Arizona. So let's just see where it takes them out west now, and they'll be going up north. This is very close to the Buffalo Bills in Nevada, but it actually goes through Utah, owned by the Atlanta Falcons, so Dolphins are going to the Falcons. Last episode, the Dolphins lost in the very first turn, so it's good to see their balls dropped a little bit, and they've gained a little bit of maturity. They're getting past turn number two, and the Dolphins win this game against the Falcons. And with this addition, Tua will finally have a couple more seconds to throw interceptions. Unfortunately for our Falcons, someone better has to look over Utah. I mean, for those BYU students, we gotta make sure they're not underage drinking or anything, which now leaves a very elongated Arizona on the map. Obviously, there's a lot of luck put into this episode, especially considering it's all random where everyone starts. Next up is the was Cleveland Browns, and I say that because they're now the South Dakota Browns. All right, will Browns be expanding or attacking, and I think they will be attacking. And going dead left from the logo, that hits Wyoming, which is owned by the New York Giants. So now we have the Cleveland Browns going to the New York Giants in Wyoming. Yes, this makes no sense. Wow, congrats to the Giants. They actually scored points in this game, but now they're in a little bit of trouble because Deshaun Watson, the Cleveland Browns, are actually first down and goal from the 8-yard line. All they need here is 8 yards, which will hand off to Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb should have cut inside there, but decides to go straight into the tackle of Kayvon Thibodeau. Let's just completely ignore the fact that I just butchered his last name, but it's third down and goal from the 7-yard line. Deshaun Watson's going to pass, of course. Runs out of this one. Maybe going to run for the end zone as well. Does he have an angle? Yes, he does. Touchdown, Cleveland. Six points on the board for them. Vanilla Vic, Daniel Jones or Danny Dimes, whatever you want to call this dude. He has 50 seconds to get a touchdown here. Here's a great start to the 44-yard line. 44 seconds, 44 yards. Here we go. Second down and 10. Daniel Jones delivers. Open receiver to Campbell and now cross midfield to the 36-yard line. Timeout called. Second down and 10. Five rush for the Cleveland Browns. Going towards the end zone. Almost intercepted. Third and 10. Game on the line for Mr. Dimes. 25 to 21. 20 seconds. Going towards the back right corner of the end zone. It's complete. Oh, he's at the one-yard line. Timeout called. 16 seconds left. There's no way they fumble this. All they need is one yard. Got it. Touchdown Giants. They take the lead with Campbell. Well, Deshaun Watson was looking forward to a victory massage after this game, but things have turned for the worse. Only five seconds, second down and 10 from his own 25. It's just going to have to be a touchdown pass at this point, and it's actually out of bounds. Wow, what a performance right there. Nonetheless, a very entertaining simulation with the Giants winning 28-25 to for the last second touchdown. And now Miles Garrett joins the Big Apple. Maybe with this addition, it'll prevent the Cowboys from scoring 40 points on their head again. And I also want to show you this. I did mention that once the team is eliminated, their other best players get into the pool, which is basically just free agency. So when a team gets an expansion, they get to claim one of these players. So you can see Nick Chubb, Jesse Bates, Amari Cooper, just to name a few of the current players right now who are currently sitting in the pool. But the South Dakota Browns had a really good run in this video, but unfortunately it was not enough as the Giants take them down from Wyoming. Turn number four, and we have three teams eliminated. I'll go ahead and tell you this right now. We're probably going to see a lot less expansions because there's less states to expand to, but now we have the Panthers again. The Panthers will be moving their armies to the left. I have no clue why I jinx myself in every video I do, but this actually comes in contact with Vermont, which has our first expansion of the game. And like I was just telling you, the best players from eliminated teams go to the pool, and because of that, the Panthers just expanded to Vermont, and they're gonna get Nick Chubb, who just came out of the recently eliminated Cleveland Browns. There you have it. What a very strong start for the Panthers in the video. The Panthers always do good in imperialism for a reason, but now we have the Philadelphia Eagles. The Eagles, I believe, are in Delaware right now, and it looks like they'll be going up north for another expansion. And they actually got very lucky, too, considering how small Delaware is this arrow just barely managed to fit through Maryland and actually landed on their home state of Pennsylvania so we have another expansion and so now the Philadelphia Eagles hold all of Pennsylvania which actually makes sense and they'll actually end up adding on the second best player in the pool right now which is Jesse Bates I love how when I always talk about something the contradicting thing always happens right after that but now we have the Lions Lions currently reside in Sweet Home Alabama and they have teams all next to them this could be going to Georgia which easily will go through the south part of Georgia so that means the Lions will be taking on the Ravens can Lamar get 60 more yards to get this team in the end zone. Let's see if they can do so here. I believe that's J.K. Dobbins, even though he definitely does not just tear his Achilles. That's something I didn't mention. Aaron Rodgers will not be playing in this video. First of all, another really good catch. Mark Andrews now first on Tim the timeout, but Aaron Rodgers will not be playing this video. He already tore his Achilles, so Zach Wilson will be quarterback for the Jets. But in this case, I forgot to substitute J.K. Dobbins out. Just let it slide, people, okay? I make mistakes all the time. First down and 10, 46 seconds from the 44-yard line. Lamar delivers. It's going to be short of the first down. Timeout called from 38. Final play, fourth down and six, three seconds, has to go to the end zone. Oh, do so. It's knocked down. Incomplete. Turnover on downs and the Lions have one second to need this clock out with Jared Goff 
Lions get it done on the invasion. Well, I hope Sam Laporta enjoyed his starting job for one week. The misfortunes for the Ravens just continue to occur in imperialism. They can never catch a break, but that's another team down. I feel so bad for the Ravens. I'm not doing this on purpose. It just ends up happening, but the Giants are back in the wheel. Giants are surrounded on all sides, so which see which way they're going to attack. It's going to go to the left, which is a straight concourse to the land of the potatoes currently occupied by the LA Rams. So the Giants are going to be visiting Las Vegas. I don't know my geography. That's Los Angeles. 55 seconds from SoFi Stadium. Daniel Jones of the middle. We have a touchdown. The Giants will take a lead now to Sterling Shepard. Well, the Rams have 50 seconds to strike back with at least four points of their own. Okay, they're not going to do it there. Well, that's an interception. Well, if the Rams want this ball back, they got to stop getting the first down. Nick Chubb just gets tackled instantly. Fourth down and seven. Hold that thought. Graham Gano just missed this field goal. So the Rams get the ball back in perfect fashion around midfield down by four points. This was wide right. Five seconds from the 40-yard line. Stafford's going to throw this one to the end zone from the middle of the field. And he actually throws it 10 yards out of the end zone too. Okay, the Giants win this game. I mean, could Big Blue be making a return? Now they got Aaron Donald at right end. And on the other side of him on the left end is Miles Garrett. This is pretty unstoppable. You know, I got to say, it's kind of weird seeing Idaho, Wyoming, and South Dakota as blue states. Didn't think I'd say this, but the two biggest threats right now are currently the Panthers and the Giants. Now we have the Jaguars. And just for a reminder, the Jaguars are right here in small little Connecticut. They're surrounded by three teams. It's either going to be the Niners, Cowboys, or Vikings for their next game. So let's three which one of those three it will be, and it looks like it's going up north. So judging by that arrow, it's going to go straight through Massachusetts, which is currently occupied by the Dallas Cowboys, which means the Jacksonville Jaguars will be taking on the Cowboys. A minute and 30 seconds, second down and eight. T-Law steps up to this one, fires, delivers on the sideline, complete. A minute and 30 to Evan Ingram. Now fourth down and eight with 58 seconds left. Game is on the line. Micah Parsons, who else, man? First down and 10, turnover on down to the Cowboys. Well, all they need is two yards to end this game. It's a handoff to Tony Pollard. For whatever reason, the ball just glitched in his hands, but game over, which will allow the Dallas Cowboys to get a pretty solid wide receiver number two, Calvin Ridley. Yeah, I don't know if I can trust the Dallas Cowboys owning Massachusetts and Connecticut. I mean, there's too many Ivy League schools in this area. Do we really trust the Cowboys watching over them? I also want to mention that no power-ups have been used yet, and I think that's a good thing I'm mentioning that because I'm definitely going to jinx it. And continuing on with turn number seven, we will go to the Saints, which are now in Montana. Saints have two possibilities here. Either they're going to attack the Giants, which I don't recommend, or claim the Bandit power-up. Let's hope it's the second one, and it's going to Canada. <laughs> Obviously, we can't go to Canada in this video, and that honestly might be going through North Dakota. You know, I just might be the greatest jinxer alive. With that being said, I'm going to go and get this out of the way. I hope someone shows up at my door with $1 million right now. Guys, you will never believe what just happened. Someone just knocked on my door, and he claimed he's from a company called the IRS or something, and he's talking about money too. This is the best day ever. But jokes aside, this means we have our first power-up claimed. It's Bandit. Now, I did buff this power-up last episode, and I'm going to keep it the same for this one. Instead of stealing one player from a random team, you get to steal two players from two separate teams. So right here is a wheel with the remaining 25 teams on it, not counting the Saints. I'm going to spin it twice, and for the two teams that land on, they're going to get a player stolen from them, landing on the Saints. Team number one, the Titans. Oh, the Saints will be stealing Derrick Henry. That's huge. And the second player stealing will be from the Dallas Cowboys. Oh my goodness, that's not good either. That's like Michael Parsons or something. All right, let's talk about the three players the Saints got out of this move. First of all, they stole Derrick Henry from the Titans. Really good. Even better, they stole Michael Parsons from the Cowboys. And this counts as an expansion, and the best player currently sitting in the pool was Cooper Cup. I don't have him injured in this, considering he will be back eventually. It's not like Aaron Rodgers where he's gone for the whole season. So yes, three players, all 94 plus overall for the Saints, completely changes their roster. They are now a threat out there in the West. I love imperialism. It's so crazy how one move can make or break an entire team's future in the video, but now we have the Green Bay Packers. So get this, the Green Bay Packers are kind of isolated out here. The chance they land on a team is basically zero to none because they have three power-ups touching their borders. So we're going to have another power, basically. It's going to be Gambler, Afterlife, or Double Trouble. Let's just see which one it's going to be out of these three. I think that's going straight down to Texas. Yeah, you can't argue that call. That is 100% a dead shot for the Lone Star State, which means the... Green Bay Packers expand, they'll get a free agent from the pool, and they also claim the double trouble power, which if you remember, pretty simple to explain, they get to steal two players for every game they win instead of one. And a very solid pickup for the Green Bay Packers, Roquan Smith is joining the middle linebacker crew. That makes two power-ups off the board, still six remaining, we're going back to the Saints? Alright Saints, where are we off to now? Looks like dead to the right. Uh oh, look who's to the right of the Saints, it's the was Denver Broncos, now they can't hide anymore in Colorado. They have to play the Saints. Uh oh, are the Broncos trying to make a name for themselves in imperialism? Finally, 25 seconds left. Russell Wilson. <laughs> 
Micah Parsons made it home. Now Russell Wilson just has to throw it to the end zone. No good. And the Broncos lose early. <laughs> this is just so ironically funny. I mean, I'm sorry, Broncos fans. You guys have become the laughing stock of imperialism. But the Broncos are used to just sitting pretty in Colorado the entire video. And they're used to making it to like the final five every single time. But nope, not this time. And so that means 94 overall Patrick Sertan will join the Saints. And the Broncos will finally be making an early exit in imperialism. Man, I love football. I love this season. And look, now that we've reached fall, if you're anything like me, all that's on your mind is football, football, and football. Well, maybe also food. And that's where Factor steps in, as you can skip the stressful steps of grocery shopping as well as saving time to do the things that are important, like strategizing your fantasy football lineup. All it takes is for you to pop the fresh, never frozen meal in the microwave for two minutes and you are ready to enjoy. The thing I love most about Factors is versatility. With well over 30 flavorful options, categorized under Chef's Choice, Keto, Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and even Vegan, there is something for everyone to satisfy your dietary needs. And even when you're craving something special, Factor also provides fresh gourmet meals for your weekly options. Weekly options, that's right. Menus are updated weekly, so there's plenty to choose from in a long-ranging catalog. So if you would like fresh meals delivered straight to your door, all you need to do is head to Factor75.com or click on the link in the first line of the description and use code DEANSWORLD50 for an astonishing 50% off your first Factor box. That's Factor75.com and code DEANSWORLD50. Big thanks to Factor for today's partnering. Now let's keep things rolling. Turn ocho, quien sera? It's gonna be the Washington Commanders. I really need to update their logo. Washington is currently sitting in Oregon, and that's probably gonna be an expansion to California. Sure enough, it barely dodges Nevada, which means the Washington Commanders take control of the West Coast. Not the greatest pickup, but still a pretty solid pickup from free agency in the pool, Marlon Humphrey. Really weird how California did not start with a team in this video, but now we're gonna go to the state right next to it, which is Nevada for the Buffalo Bills. Bills are completely in golf, which means we will have a matchup here, and I think that's going to go towards California. Yeah, we are just caught in a red herring right now, so this means the Buffalo Bills now in Nevada will be traveling to the Washington Commanders in California. Hold up a second. Do the California Commanders have a chance? They have under 30 seconds, and Sam Howell, 360 no scopes this one. Please get out of bounds. What are you doing, Antonio Gibson? This is why nobody uses you in fantasy. The Commanders had a golden opportunity to get in range for a field goal, but now they just kind of lost the game. Hold up. Oh, Jahan Dodson, if you would have just turned on the burners a second early he could have broke out of that, but the Bills holding on the Commanders, that was just embarrassing. I was going to give the Bills Terry McLaurin, but then I thought Josh Allen would probably just overthrow him by 20 yards and throw an interception anyway, so Jonathan Allen is the better decision. Well, the Commanders took command of the West Coast for like five seconds, and now a fourth of the league has been eliminated, which means we're down to 24 teams. Now, last time I did disasters for every eight teams eliminated, something would happen to the map. I'm not doing it this time just because I think they need to be reworked a little bit. I liked them, but there were some problems, so we'll continue on with 24 teams. Eight teams down and 23 more to eliminate the LA Chargers and Mississippi. Chargers share a border with the Bengals and Lions, but also the afterlife power-up. That's going to go up north. Okay, never mind. This one was super close. I mean, a matter of pixels, it was missing the Lions land in Alabama. So instead, it's actually going to go hit up Tennessee, which is the Jets. So this is the first time we see Zach Wilson play for the Jets in today's video. And that will also be the last time we see Zach Wilson play in this video. The Chargers get it done. It looks like Sauce will have to find some new smoking buddies out in LA. You know, I feel bad for the Jets. I feel bad for Aaron Rodgers, but at least you guys made it far last episode. Turn number 10, and we'll continue with the Cardinals. Let's see which way they will be heading, and it's gonna go up north to probably where Chicago is sitting, which in this case, the Chicago Bears are actually the Michigan Bears, and this air points right up north that way, so the Bears will be playing the Cardinals. Wow, what a powerhouse matchup we have right here. Even the scoreboard reflects it. 13 to 13, now 3rd and 9 from the 38. From the 38-yard line, but it's a little longer than that. This kick is good. The Cardinals take a 3-point lead, 16 to 13. I'd say it's about a 55-yard kick for Cairo Santos. No good. It hit it's left, and the Cardinals will hold on. I think they just won their first ever Imperialism game. That is, in fact, their first ever win in an Imperialism video on my channel. The only other team who has yet to win a game is the Colts, so the Cardinals are now 1-5 in five in history of Imperialism. Which also means this is the first ever Cardinals acquisition, which is going to be DJ Moore. Very surprising to see this, but both these teams really suck, so it was a toss-up for either or. Turn number 11. I gotta start speeding things up. We're already 20 minutes into this video. Here is the Texans. Not gonna lie, I'm cheering for the Texans. They're representing my home state in this video, but I gotta say, it's a fighting a losing battle. I mean, the Lions and Seahawks. Let's just see which team wins the sweepstakes for killing the hell out of the Texans. I think it's going to be the Seahawks. Yeah, for sure. It hits the west side of North Carolina, so the Texans will be visiting Seattle. This is not as bad as I thought, actually. Texans are down by one. CJ Stroud has another first down completion to Dalton Schultz. This will bring us to the two-minute warning. Hold up a second. Third down and 12. CJ Stroud is going to pass. What are we doing? Oh my goodness. You gotta be serious. 
You couldn't have done anything stupider right there. Just run the damn ball. So instead of it being a manageable 40-yard kick, they're now kicking from midfield, and the Texans really just blew this game completely. Let's just see if they even come close to making this field goal. Oh, okay. Never mind. Never mind. I'm sorry. I didn't doubt you one second. <laughs> wow, man. Congrats to the Texans. I can't believe they just did that. 1917 win. And so now the Texans will get to add that one dude who wears a pacifier instead of a mouth guard. It's DK Metcalf. Very impressive win for the Houston Texans, and they now take care of both Carolinas. Welcome to a little thing we like to call imperialism. Now it's going to be their division rival, the Titans. Which, for your reminder, they're currently occupying the country roads. And so where will those country roads take them? Maybe home? Maybe, who knows? Down south. This arrow is going to clip the bottom bottom part of Virginia, which means we have an expansion. And so the Titans will get to add on a pretty solid wide receiver too behind D-Hop, Amari Cooper. So now the Carolinas are united and the Virginias are united and we're going to have the Eagles. Eagles didn't move too far in this video. In fact, they control Pennsylvania right now and I think they're going up to New York. Oh yeah, no doubt. Coming in contact with New York, which means we're going to have a week two rematch between these two teams that just played the Vikings and the Eagles. Yeah, unfortunately for the Vikings, this went exactly how it happened just a couple of days ago, except maybe a little bit worse. And I think it's become common knowledge for whenever the Vikings lose in this video, you already know who's getting stolen. It's Justin Jefferson. You know, I love how perfectly this turned out because now look who's sharing a border with the Philadelphia Eagles. It's the Dallas Cowboys. I gotta say, the distribution of teams playing in this video is actually pretty good. Like, most teams have actually done something, and now we're going back to the Panthers. So here's the dilemma for the Carolina Panthers. It's either the Cowboys or the Eagles. Since they don't share much border with them, I'm just gonna spin one arrow. Whatever team it's closest to is the team they'll play. So yeah, whatever this arrow is closest to, and ooh, I think that's a dead shot for the Cowboys anyways. Sure enough is, it's gonna hit the gun handle of Massachusetts, so the Carolina Panthers have their first real test, it's against the Cowboys. Nothing screams 30 minutes off my life other than some overtime games, but here we have a first down by Nick Chubb, a new addition for the Carolina Panthers, and they're the 14 in overtime. It's not looking like the Panthers are gonna hit the end zone, however. Third and 10, Bryce Young has easy protection here, and delivers. There's a touchdown, but there's a flag. Oh no, this is coming back. Illegal touching. I don't think I've ever seen that one in Madden simulation before. The only instance I can think of illegal touching is by one quarterback in this league. I'll let you figure out the rest. Anyways, here's going to be a field goal to make it 34-31. to 31. Cowboys get a shot. Well, it took like three plays for the Cowboys to get back in field goal range. I don't know why they didn't do this the entire game, but now let's see if they can get a touchdown. Hand off to Tony Pollard up the middle. Has to break one tackle. Can he break two? Oh, he got close. They're going to call a timeout here from the two-yard line. Unfortunately, we'll have to waste 30 more minutes of my life because we're probably going to be going to overtime. Double overtime, that is. Next to score wins. Third and eight from the Cowboys. 40. Bryce Young delivers this complete but well short. The Cowboys are going to get it back. The Cowboys somehow did not get that first down so now they'll be the ones punting you gotta be kidding me can somebody please just score please 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 cowboys i don't even care that it's the cowboys just somebody win this game i'm losing years of my life watching this it's up it's through cowboys win Oh my goodness. And so that teardropper of a game has left me no choice other than to give Nick Chubb to the Dallas Cowboys. Well, the Panthers started strong, but unfortunately, they just had some pretty solid teams around here in the New England area, so that means they're off the map. Alright, so now the turn 14. I realized I just made a mistake. The Jets were on the wheel for a bit longer than they should have been. You might have realized that, but now we have the Bengals for the first time. Fittingly enough, the Bengals are now the Bayou Bengals with Joe Burrow being from LSU. This is all just a really good coincidence, but they can either get the afterlife power-up or play the Packers or Chargers. So which one will it be? And it's going straight up north to Arkansas, which is in fact clear as day, meaning the Bengals will expand to Arkansas, get the afterlife power-up, and steal a player. Now, for a reminder, what does the afterlife power-up do? It's really simple. It just gives them a second chance for if they lose a game. But do remember, if they lose, they still lose players. They just stay on the map for another life. And for their expansion player, they'll get the add-on Justin Simmons. Moving forward with the Green Bay Packers, they're right next to the Bengals. Could these be the two teams in our next matchup? And I think it is. So yes, that arrow pointing down to the right will come in contact with Arkansas and Louisiana which means it is the Bengals. So keep in mind, if the Bengals lose this game, they're going to lose two players because the Packers have double trouble and they'll lose their afterlife. So let's just see what happens. Well, hold up a second. The Bengals are in a little trouble here. It's going to take stopping Jordan Love from getting basically one first down, and this is going to take us to the two-minute warning. Game on the line here. Handoff. No, they're going to fake the handoff. Jordan Love keeps it, turns around, throws it. Somehow it's a completion to Aaron Jones. First down, second timeout called. Bengals still have a slim chance. I don't know why the Packers are throwing the football. It better work in your favor. Jordan Love is probably just going to throw this one out of bounds. There's a flag though? What? Oh my goodness. This is so scripted. Is it because I'm a Packers fan you had to do this? Wow. Congratulations to this win for the Green Bay Packers. They had to pay the refs just a few extra dollars this game, but they're going to need out the clock with Jordan Love, and the Packers get it done. They get still two players.
Laters. Yeah, even though the Bengals are still alive on the map, the Packers just bankrupt the Bengals, just kind of how the Bengals did to themselves with Joe Burrow. Their first deal will be Jamar Chase, the 94 overall X Factor. And the gift of expansion the Bengals literally just got a couple seconds ago is now a Green Bay Packer. That's Justin Simmons. So now the afterlife power up, which was in the hands of the Bengals for literally like five seconds, is no longer a thing. No territory change. This is where we stay at for the next turn. Still 19 teams remaining as we continue on to our next turn. It's the New Orleans Saints back. Well, not New Orleans. Saints currently own a big chunk of land from Montana to Minnesota, and they're going to be tacking down, which I believe is the Giants. Sure enough, this is going to go straight for Wyoming, which means the Saints will be taking on the Giants. The Giants are holding on by a string of thread. It's going to take a touchdown and the two-point conversion, and almost a good completion out of Darren Waller. Better defense, though. As for the Saints on defense, they have Patrick Sertan and Micah Parsons, but they also have Cooper Cup on offense, so it really explains why they're winning in this game right now. But Daniel Jones down by eight, delivers, has a wide-open receiver. That's a first down. Well, this is the final chance for the Giants from the 40-yard line. It's just got to get to the end zone. Daniel Jones is going to make sure it gets there. That's the first important step, and it's not good. So the Saints are becoming a real big threat in this video. They win this game 29-21. to So now the Saints will add 99 overall Aaron Donald to the right end, which is going to move Micah Parsons to the left end. And I want to bring your attention back to the pool, because the Giants had a lot of good players on their team. Miles Garrett, Dexter Lawrence, and Saquon Barkley. Whoever gets the next expansion is going to be blessed. But yeah, I think it's time we start taking the Saints a little bit seriously in this video, because now look at the land they own, stretching from Montana to Minnesota. This is kind of crazy. Turn number 16, we're close to the halfway point, and we'll have the Carolina Texans back. I was surprised to see them win one game. I'll be more surprised if they win two. This is going towards the left. It's been a minute since we've seen a toss-up arrow like this. I mean, a matter of pixels before hitting Georgia right here, but it actually comes in contact with Tennessee before it comes anywhere close to the Lions territory, which means the Texans will play the Chargers. Kind of crazy. Yeah, there's only so far the Houston Texans can take you, but I give them props though, but the Chargers will get it done here. And with that loss, the Texans lose their one and only prize possession, which was DK Metcalf. So now because of that really weird arrow we just had, the Chargers now have an area of land which completely wraps around the Lions, so let's see how this is going to play out in the future. And now for turn number 17. Oh wow, speaking of the Lions. Alright, so looking down south, you see the Lions have two options. They're completely engulfed by the Chargers right now if they just beat the Texans. However, the Lions do have an escape. They have an away out. If they get an arrow which points closer to Florida, then I'll call it expansion. It's the same thing we just did the Panthers. If it's close to the Chargers, it's that. If it's closest to Florida, it's expansion. Let's see what happens. All right, the Lions are hoping to get an arrow pointing down south. It's doing just that. Welcome to Florida, and the clone power-up is now for the Lions. All right, so a reminder how the clone power-up works as I fill it in. Essentially, the clone power-up gives you a second land mass for the same team. So that means the Lions will get the spin a wheel with all the remaining unclaimed states, and whatever it lands on, they get to add another land area too. But since it is an expansion, they also get to steal a player from the pool. And remember the Giants lost, they left some really good players behind. Miles Garrett is now the Lions. This couldn't have gone any better for the Lions. Alright, so right here we have a wheel of the four remaining unclaimed states without a power-up. Whichever one it lands on is where the Lions will be adding another land mass to. It is going to be Washington. Okay. So now the Lions have a backup plan. It didn't really put them to a much safer position, however, because they're still in golf. This time it's the Bills and Saints up north. An absolute flawless turn for the Lions, and now we're going back to the Cardinals. The Cardinals currently sit in Michigan and Indiana, and it looks like they're going to go to left to Illinois. Sure enough, they do. This comes close to where Chicago's located, so they're going to expand to Illinois, and they're also going to get the rewind power-up. So how does the rewind power-up work? Well, it's actually pretty simple. I would say it's the weakest, but it's still pretty solid because it's going to give you a 99 overall legend from that team's past. So who I'm thinking of right now is probably going to be Larry Fitzgerald. You know what? I'm actually going to do the Cardinals a solid. Considering the Cardinals currently have Joshua Dobbs as their quarterback, this was probably the greatest power-up they could have actually got. Instead of Larry Fitzgerald, let me give him Kurt Warner. Is he a better player overall than Larry Fitzgerald? Eh, not really. But did he lead him to a Super Bowl? Of course he did. I really wish they won that game, man. San Antonio Holmes, why did you have to do that? Big W for both the Lions and Cardinals, and now we're finally going to get the Steelers. I mean, waiting for them. Because we haven't seen the Steelers once in this video, this is where they're at. They currently own Maryland, and they're nudged between the Eagles and Titans, so up or down is their only options. Let's just see which one it's going to be, and I think it's going to go up to the Philadelphia Eagles. And even in randomized edition, the two Pennsylvania teams still find a way to play each other, so it's going to be the Steelers at the Eagles. So even though the Steelers are making a late appearance in this video, they missed out on everything. They're still in this game, and a first down, ooh, they couldn't get it. Fourth and one at least. This is going to make it a two-minute warning. Oh, let's go. Coach Tomlin said, F it, we ball. It's a pass. It's a completion. Deontay Johnson's got the first down, and timeouts are being called. And so a stunning win by the Pittsburgh Steelers beating the Eagles by 10, 27 to 17. Justin Jefferson, you are a Pittsburgh Steeler. And let's take an updated look at the pool, now featuring some really good Eagles players. Lane Johnson, 
Darius Slay is on it as well. AJ Brown and Jesse Bates all just came from the Eagles. So now after this win, the Steelers logo will finally be able to fit on the map. And so there you have it. The Steelers are now visible. All that's left is the Niners and sucky old Rhode Island. No offense. But now we're down to 16 teams. This is the final half of the league remaining. And turn number 18, we're going to go back to the Chargers. The Chargers will be taking their armies up north. And we actually had another really good toss-up arrow. Going up north, it actually hit this side of Arkansas first, which means the Chargers will take Take on the Bengals. Keep in mind the Bengals are short of Justin Simmons and Jamar Chase since the Packers stole it from them. Wow, Bengals, it feels bad, man. Even the afterlife power up couldn't help them here as they lose two games in a row. And the results of this time completely different than last episode. The Bengals just went from the highest to uh this. There wasn't really much else we could give the Chargers other than Trey Hendrickson, considering Jamar Chase is already a Green Bay Packer. Well, Bengals fans, to cope with those two losses right there, I advise you to watch the previous episode. You're gonna like it. And now turn number 19, I believe. We're gonna go to the Dolphins. It's been a minute since we kept up with the Fins. Where will they be heading? I think they'll be playing Buffalo. 100%. That's a dead shot for Nevada, which is occupied by the Buffalo Bills. So we actually have a divisional matchup. Never thought I'd see these two teams play in Imperialism, but it's happening right now. The Dolphins are going to the Bills. Third and seven for their own 34, which means they have to go about 60 yards too. Going to get a big chunk of it right here. They only have one timeout. So after he gets down right here, they're probably going to call it. But now from the 43 in Bills territory. Hold up a second. There's a flag. Could this be pass interference? This is going to place the ball like the one yard line. It is pass interference. Oh, the Dolphins have a shot. Essentially, the Dolphins need to convert on two one-yard drives right here. They need this and the two-point conversion, starting with this one. Okay, they couldn't even get the first one. Well, game over. <laughs> this AFC East battle comes down to the Bills winning it 28-20. to So now Tyreek Hill is going to have to stop streaming Fortnite for a minute because he's got to pack his bags and move to the Bills. Now it looks like the Bills are trying to rival the Saints in competition out west as the Bills are going to take care of land from California to Utah. Turn number 20 will continue on with the Colts. Finally, another new team. If there's one thing I don't like about imperialism is when a team does not get caught up like the entire video and when they finally get caught upon they just lose instantly because the teams around them are just way too good and unfortunately for the Colts they're literally sharing a border with the Saints right now which really sucks but there is two power-ups next to them let's just see what happens all right Colts your first move in this video took you 20 turns and you're gonna go to the left yeah that's just really unfortunate and remember me saying that the Colts are the only team left in imperialism through the entire series of my channel the yet to win a game and I don't really see it happening here either <laughs> I'm just so sorry Colts fans like I'm not the one doing this. Like, the Colts just cannot win a game. And even worse, they scored five points. Like, what the hell? On the bright side, though, thankfully the Colts have started the longest ongoing inside joke on this series, and that's Quentin Nelson just getting passed around infinitely. And of course, he's obviously going to be passed around here to the New Orleans Saints. Colts fans, your time will come. That time is not today, unfortunately. Turn 21 and 13 teams remain. And we're going to finally have the Kansas City Chiefs. We haven't seen them at all today. Like I said at the beginning of this video, the Chiefs are the only team in this video to start out in their home state being Missouri. And as you can see, it's got a little crowded. They still have a couple power-ups next to them, but there are some competition. Let's just see if they face some of that competition right here, right now. It's going to the right. I don't know why we've been getting so many close arrows today, but as you can see, this barely grazes through the bottom of Illinois. So this means that the Chiefs will be taking on the Sucky Cardinals. Wow, what a matchup we have here. So the Cardinals have stayed in this game, and I think that's told me more than I need to know, that Kurt Warner has actually done a lot for the Cardinals already. Just under 90 seconds, second down 11, Warner is just going to go short to James Conner here. I don't know what this play call is. It's third and 14. They just burn a timeout too. Come on, Kurt. I'm feeding for an underdog story right now. He needs 14 yards right now, and he can't escape Chris Jones. Okay, that's nice. Just your average fourth down and 24 from your own 11-yard line, and already, like, dude, where's the offensive line at? Kurt Warner did not come back for 20 years to play for this. Like, this is horrible. Man, I was all hyped up for Kurt Warner's return for everything and obviously I get nothing out of it. Chiefs win 34-27. to Which of course still applying by my no quarterback trade clause. I don't think I would want to trade Kurt Warner when we have Patrick Mahomes anyways. Buda Baker is the new safety for the Chiefs. I mean at the end of the day it's the Arizona Cardinals. There's not really much else I could have expected there. Now we're down to 12 teams. Three of them have yet to have been called on. The Pittsburgh Steelers are up next. The Steelers will be taking their armies to the south and this is a dead shot right to the Virginias which is held by the Titans. So the Steelers will be at the Titans. The Titans are kind in the same predicament the Cardinals win. They're down by almost a touchdown. They have zero timeouts and they have really little time on the board. There's a flag right here. Is this going to be a late hit? He just got shoved barely. What kind of cupcake call is that? Why have the refs been horrible today? I wonder if the Titans realize that the game does eventually end at one point because they wasted the entire clock for no reason and now they have to settle with this, which never works. I've watched this exact same play five million times. At least someone caught it this time. There's a flag though. Is this pass interference again? 
I don't know what these refs are smoking, but it just can't be good, man. Now the ball is going to be placed to the one-yard line, and now the Titans have a chance to not only just take the lead or tie the game, I mean, they can win this game after the extra point. So from the one-yard line is Ryan Tenhill. Can he get a touchdown for six? And... Surely enough, no one is even guarding. We have a touchdown to Traylon Burks. I swear, if this gets shanked or blocked or anything, I might cry myself to sleep tonight, even if I don't sleep at all. 13 to 13, extra points good. Titans win 14 to 13. Wow, those are horrible penalties. Yes, I could have done TJ Watt, but you can't pass on this. Now the Titans have a really stacked receiving core led by Justin Jefferson. I don't know if I've ever mentioned this in the series, but I don't like to pick sides, but that was just very one-sided for the Titans. Turn number 23, and we'll finally have have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers who are in Ohio. This is their first time as well. Their arrow will be pointing down south. Another really close toss-up arrow, but as you can see, this barely hits Kentucky, and we finally have the new power-up involved. This is Evolve. All right, so let me try my best to explain this as I fail in this state. Essentially, the worst three rated overall players on the team will be lifted up to match the overall of the highest overall player on their team, if that makes any sense at all. So as you can see, here's the Buccaneers lineup. Their current best overall player is Tristan Wirfs at a 92 overall. If I go ahead and sort this by overall, I click X real quick. As you can see, we now have the three worst players being David Wells, the tight end, Kyle Trask, the quarterback, and I believe this is Sean Tucker, the running back. So all three of these players will be matched up to a 92 overall to meet Tristan Wirfs. So now, as you can see, the three worst players are now now equal to the best player on the team. So David Wells is out 92 overall tied in. And then you have Kyle Trask, which is a huge one. I mean, they really needed the quarterback. And now he's a 92 overall quarterback with the Bucs. That is a big pickup for them. And then you have Sean Tucker, which is the best player now at a 92 overall as well. Not to mention, but the Buccaneers also got an expansion, which means they get to take a player from the pool. And TJ Watt just adds on to the destruction that they just added in this turn. The Buccaneers haven't even played a game yet. And they're already one of the best teams on the map. Now we're going to go to the Titans. The Titans will be marching their troops to the left. I think this is hitting the Buccaneers as well. Well, Buccaneers, you just got stacked for the battle. Let's see if it's all worth it. You're going to play the Titans at home. So now that the Buccaneers have added a 92 overall quarterback, a 92 overall tight end, and a 92 overall running back, it's almost like they're the prime Buccaneers not long ago where they had Brady Gronk and prime Leonard Fournette. This is going to be really good for them. Not to mention our 92 overall quarterback, now Kyle Trask, just completed that pass to Chris Godwin, which is going to put us to the 45-yard line. They're going to need for a touchdown, and we have two minutes and 20 seconds left. Kyle Trask delivers again, and he's 92 overall for a reason. Now hits Mike Evans to the 22. Second and six from the seven. Kyle Trask is going to throw a check down to Sean Tucker, the new running back for the Buccaneers at 92 overall. And he has a touchdown. And this is going to tie it up at 20 apiece. All right, Ryan Tannehill, you have exactly one minute to get in field goal range for three points. That's all you need. Not really a good start right there. Second and three fakes the handoff. Tannehill from the 29 going up the field. Delivers first down and more. D-Hop has got him to the 34. Ryan Tannehill is going to pass here. I would just run the football. Okay, D-Hop is open. Okay, good enough. Well, this is going to take a two-point lead for the Titans. Buccaneers only have 10 seconds and one timeout now. Really unfortunate for the Buccaneers. I thought they built up a really solid squad after getting the evolved power-up. Let's just see if maybe Kyle Trask can prove his overall here. Wow, it's a completion, but there's just not enough time. Wow, the Titans, man. They get it done. Good for them, though. So now the Titans will take care of TJ Watt. And as for our guys who are now 92 overalls, including Sean Tucker and David Wells, they'll also be joining the pool. Remember, I can't trade quarterbacks, so that means Kyle Trask is not in the pool. Gotta say, I was definitely looking forward to a Buccaneers run in this video, but unfortunately, it's just not gonna happen. Turn number 24, and we've reached our top 10 teams. Now going back to the Chiefs. The Chiefs who stayed in Kansas City will be taking their troops up north. Oh my goodness, you have to be kidding me. This this is the last team who deserves this power-up. Oh, that's not good. So yes, this is the juice power-up. What it does is that it's going to take your three best players and add five overall to them. Now, however, for the Chiefs, it's a little bit different considering they have Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey already. They're both 99 overall, so they are basically void. It's going to be the players after them, which is going to help even more. But because of this power-up, Chris Jones is now a 99 overall. And as you can see, Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey, considering they were already 99 overall, they just stay there. But two other players get five overall now. It's going to be Creed Humphrey the center, and Buda Baker, the new addition, will now be a 95 overall for the Chiefs. That's pretty solid for them. With that addition, there's only one more power-up left on the map, and it's Gambler. Now going back to the Lions, and here's the situation for the Lions. As you can see, their main land, which started at Alabama, is completely in goal for the Chargers, which gives them no choice that they have to play them. Remember, if you have the clone power-up, if you still have two land areas on the map at the same time, you have to attack from your original land area. That means the Lions be playing from their original land area, which is in Alabama. So, Lions and Chargers. Third and four from their own 31. Herbert has the time he needs 
delivers up the middle of the field, has a completion here in stride. It's going to be a first down to the 37 opposing side of the field now to Gerald Everett. So they could probably kick a field goal from here, but the question is, can they get a touchdown? It's looking like it's going to do so right here. Another solid completion to the 11. Should be a routine handoff to Austin Eckler, and of course, he's in for the touchdown. It's a walk-off. The Chargers get it done. The Lions are not eliminated, however. They're still on the map in Washington. And now at right end for the Chargers, it's Miles Garrett, which is going to move Trey Hendrickson to left end. So like I mentioned, this is not going to knock the Lions off the map. However, it's just going to put them in Washington. So here's an updated look at the map. As you can see, the Lions are isolated up north in Washington. The Chargers take control of basically the entirety of the south. And now on to turn number 25, where we're finally going to get the Raiders. This leaves only one team yet to be called on, and that's the 49ers. And the Raiders will be venturing out east. You know, this only makes sense. Of course, the Las Vegas Raiders are the one to get the gambler power up. It was meant to be. So I actually reworked the gambler power up for this video. Instead of it being a chance to get two players or nothing, I'm making it a little bit better, but also a little bit worse. It's going to be a 50-50 wheel with a chance to get three players or lose a player. And for their pool acquisition, I'm going to give them Mark Andrews. It's going to be tough for the Raiders to win one game, but if they manage to do so, then they can become really strong. Next up is the Saints. The Saints have been pretty dominant in this video. Let's just see if they can keep it up. That's going down. I don't know how this keeps on happening, but the Saints are going to play the Raiders. It seems like every time a team gets the power up, they have to play the very next game, but the Saints will be going to Vegas. The Raiders have the lead, but they are backed up pretty far. They just need to get a first down here. Okay, that was easy enough. What a win for the Raiders. I really did not think they'd be able to pull this off, but now they get to test their luck on the new gambler wheel. So as simple as this, it could triple their awards, giving them three players in the Saints, or they could lose a player currently on their roster, and it will triple it. The Saints get to lose three players on their way out. I mean, I don't think you could have asked for any greater acquisition than what the Raiders just got here. Aaron Donald, Micah Parsons, and Cooper Cup. So they just got two of the best edge rushers in the game and a top five receiver when fully healthy. Maybe the Raiders might be unstoppable now. I mean, what a huge turn of events as we head into the top nine teams. The Raiders are now looking like serious contenders after that acquisition. Turn number 26, we only have nine teams remaining. The Green Bay Packers are back. Packers have a lot of strong dynasties sharing borders with them, and I think they're going to be expanding here. No doubt, this is going straight for New Mexico. This is a really late expansion. A lot of solid players still in the pool, but I decided to give the Packers Derrick Henry. We're now down to only two unclaimed states, that being Wisconsin and New Jersey, now the Lions. So we've gotten to this situation again where it's going to be one of two teams. Once again, we'll spin an arrow, whatever it's closest to will be the matchup for the Lions. Bills or Raiders, I don't really know who you'd rather play here, and that's closer to the Bills, so the Lions will be traveling to Buffalo. Not really, but they will be. Sorry guys, I didn't know we're playing this game on the surface of Saturn because it is completely bright outside. Either that or they just got hit by MW2 flashbang, but either way, the Buffalo Bills are in range to kick a field goal, it's just a matter of when. Which will be right about now. Tyler Bass, I feel for you. It looks like you're aiming directly at the sun right now, but either way, he's automatic. It's a field goal up and good for the Bills. Which does, in fact, mean the Bills win this game 32-29. to Sorry, Lions. I think you guys were outnumbered, but you did make it far. It's not that the Bills really needed them. It's just because there was no one else better to take, so Monra St. Brown is now a Buffalo Bill. And you know, in past episodes, I referred to Clone as probably the most powerful power up, but this episode didn't really prove that well. But this is what our map looks like as we head into the final eight teams. So just looking at the remaining eight teams, half the teams remaining have won in Imperialism before, so we could have a repeat champion for the first time in this series. Now the Green Bay Packers. Lots of options for the Packers. They're all pretty tough games. That's going to go to the right, a little bit north as well. Are you kidding me? Out of all possible scenarios that the Packers could have played, it somehow lands between this little divot of land right here, which is going to hit the Chiefs? Really? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure Jordan Love's first career start was in this stadium right here. It was the week Rodgers got COVID because he went to a Halloween party, but now it's second down and 10 with 40 seconds left. They are close to range with field goal, but I imagine they're thinking about touchdown right here. Play action pass by Jordan Love. Open receiver and dives at the one just short. Wow, dude, Jamar Chase. I swear if they call a timeout and kick a field goal here, please go for the end zone. Please. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Please. Thank you. I did not want to see overtime. Green Bay Packers scored a touchdown to Tucker Craft. I'd say this is a pretty stunning win. The Green Bay Packers are going to take home 299 overalls considering the Chiefs just got the juice power up. So yeah, as you can see, Chris Jones and Travis Kelsey, Packers have the double trouble power up still. This might be unstoppable. So now the Packers are going to own a really weird piece of land. Like this is probably the weirdest land demographic we've seen yet in imperialism. I mean, this little opening right here, which connects the Packers land from Missouri to Kansas is like the size of the Panama Canal. It literally 
literally connects this entirety weird landmass going from New Mexico to Upper Peninsula of Michigan. You know, I'm really surprised the Chiefs have never won in imperialism. They came close in episode one, but that's the closest they've been yet. Now the Cowboys are back. Chances are this arrow should land closer to the Titans. There it is right there. So yes, it does come in contact with upstate New York, which is controlled by the Titans. And I uh, also just want to mention the Niners still holding on by a thread in Rhode Island right now. Well, damn, I thought the Titans were good in this video. What happened here? Cowboys, man. 41-17 victory. I mean, in all honesty, there's only so far you can make it with Ryan Tannehill as your quarterback throwing to Justin Jefferson. This is a better place for Jay Jettis. So with this win, the Cowboys take control of essentially the entirety of the Northeast. It's just still so funny how the Niners are just wedged in Rhode Island still. They still have yet to have been called upon, but now we're down to six teams. Six teams remain, and we have the Raiders again. The Raiders, with a gambling power-up, will be taking their armies to the left, probably the West Coast. Sure enough, they will. It looks like they want to reclaim Vegas for their own, so it's going to be the Bills versus the Raiders. Pretty decently low-scoring game here. I'm surprised the Broncos are not playing it. These two teams right here, the only two teams left on the map that have yet the win at all. The other four teams, they have all won in Imperialism before. Let's just see which team is going to have a shot to continue further, and oh, I don't know how that was complete. First and 10 of the 43 to Jacoby Myers. 90 seconds, Jimmy Garoppolo from his own 43 goes down the middle of the field, completes this one to the tight end, Mark Andrews, first and 10 of the 39. I lied, that was Cooper Cup. I saw a white dude wearing number 85 and assumed it was a tight end. <laughs> Third and nine, leave it to the Raiders to mess this up somehow. All they do is get a first down. There they have it. They're going to field goal range easily now. They're going to kick it soon. That pass was caught by Mark Andrews. Now here's the field goal for Carlson. They take a two-point lead. It's good. 14 or 15 to 13. And sure enough, that's how this game ends. 15 to 13. The Raiders are going back to the gambler wheel. All right, I see this as a really important spin, considering if the Raiders somehow triple the awards here, they might be too good to stop. If they lose one, it's not going to be the end of the world. They're still pretty solid. Oh no. Oh no. So here's the three players the Raiders will get out of that. Essentially two top five receivers, well maybe debatably, and a top five defensive tackle. I mean, god this is insane. Well sure enough, the Raiders claim back the West Coast for their own, and like I said, this is the only team standing left that has not won it yet. And here is the final five teams. Welcome to the final stretch. It's turn number 30. Oh, there it is. It only took 30 damn turns for you to show up. Okay. Hmm, I wonder who the Niners will be playing this game. I can't just seem to put my finger on it. From the one, this is a handoff to Debo Samuel lined up as a running back because that's what he truly is. He has the touchdown. Niners strike first and over time, the Cowboys have to respond. Second and 10, Dak keeps this one, delivers up middle of the field, has a completion. I don't know how he held onto that and CD Lamb at the dead at the 50. The main issue is time and the Cowboys seem not to be worrying about it at all but Dak Prescott oh he throws the interception to Fred Warner what Fred Warner is running routes with the receivers okay the Niners just won I love how the Niners who did nothing the entire video one thing still stays the same and that they can beat the Cowboys in any game possible <laughs> could this be the next Quentin Nelson I mean this dude's been passed around infinitely as well well congratulations to little old Rhode Island they just multiplied their size through like the power of 1 million and now it's up to the final four teams Raiders Packers Chargers and Niners Four more squads left, and the Raiders, the only one who's yet to win. 100% that comes in contact with New Mexico, so this is going to be a big game for both sides. Whoever wins this, man, they're going to get a lot of players. 30 seconds and about 30 yards to the Green Bay Packers, down by six points. Jordan Love in some trouble, fumbles the football recovered by the Raiders. Game over, the Packers are done. So now the question I'm wondering right now is, will the Raiders be lucky enough to get the good side of the wheel three times in a row for their gambler power? That would be insane if they do. Let's just go ahead and spin and see, and they're actually going to lose a player. Okay, you know what? That's fair. So instead of gaining three players from the Packers, in which if they did, they would have gotten Travis Kelsey, Chris Jones, and Jair Alexander. Instead, they're going to lose one player, which is going to be Aaron Donald, and he is the one who literally caused the fumble in that drive. So that kind of sucks for the Raiders. So a big shout out for our West Coast, because our three final teams are all from that area. I mean, the San Francisco Niners, Los Angeles Chargers, and the Las Vegas Raiders, man. Who is going to win it out of these West Coast Warriors? Turn number 32. We're getting really close. It's going to be the Chargers up next. So who will it be? Will it be the Raiders? or the Niners. I think it's going towards the Niners. For sure it is, which means the Raiders have 100% clinched a spot in the championship game in this video. So now we have the Chargers versus the Niners. Semi-final game, 1 minute 30 seconds left. Is that a completion? No, out of bounds. Second and 10. Very close though. All right, maybe the refs can redeem themselves in this video. They've been pretty bad, but this is a booth review. Is this a catch? Oh, I don't think so actually. And I mean, he does have two feet down. Okay, maybe his toe comes down right there. That could be a catch. It's a catch. Now at the 43-yard line, minute and 25 seconds left. Justin Herbert going to go short again, gets out of bounds, gains five. Third and five. Herbert wants to go deep with this one, completes this one in the middle of the field. Hold up a second. 
Hold up, first and goal from the seven. They don't have any timeouts though. Keenan Allen brought it down. 35 seconds. 20 seconds remaining from the seven yard line. Can the Chargers find the end zone? Yes, it was that easy. Oh my goodness, the Niners, man. What even happened? Gerald Everett with a touchdown. The Niners are still in this game. They just got a face mask penalty. This could be the final play. They're at the 47-yard line. Can they get a good chunk right here? Hold up a second. Timeout call. They can kick a field goal from here. It'd be like 55 yards, but it's possible. This is to win the game. Can they get it? Oh my goodness, man. What a change of events. The Niners just did that. Oh my goodness. Niners, man. Niners, Raiders. It's a championship game. Couldn't have scripted any better. The two teams hate each other. The final player steal this video will be Miles Garrett joining the Niners right beside Nick Bosa. So here it is, the final two teams. It's funny that it's come down to both these teams because I know these two teams have like a really big rivalry in the Bay Area between the Raiders and Oakland, obviously. And also, it's just funny considering that these two teams did nothing like this entire video. Like they were just kind of staying around, just kind of isolating themselves from everything the Raiders did something first they expanded first and then the Niners did not come until like really late like just a few minutes ago is when their first move was so these two teams meeting up is just really weird but I'm excited both teams are really good in this video Raiders and Niners now you gotta determine who is gonna be home here it is the final turn whoever it lands on will be the attacking team Ooh, it was close the Niners are playing on the road it's gonna be in the Death Star for the final game the championship game the Niners are down to the final straw it's third and 18 not looking too good and they're down by four let's see if they can get a completion here no they can't it's gonna be fourth and 18 game is on the line now for Brock Purdy and the Raiders win their first ever imperialism it's got to go 18 yards for Brock Purdy already in some trouble delivers knockdown incomplete Raiders do it man one first down game is over and Raiders will win imperialism six randomized edition I seriously can't believe with all the teams that were left on the map the Raiders out of all teams somehow came out on top of it and we didn't have a winner twice I'm basically Raiders are first time in the imperialism we could have had the Niners or the Chargers Packers win it again but no the Raiders get it done and now my favorite part considering recording is basically over it's the time lapse of filling the map one color this time it's gonna be Raiders gray Well, here it is. I am very surprised to see this, but somehow the Vegas Raiders got it done. Always good to see a fresh team win this. Now it's time to take a look at all your guys' comments to see who got this one right. I'm pretty sure at the time I'm recording this right now, there's about 440 comments, which is going to take me a minute to go through all of them. Let's see how many of you guys picked the Raiders to win it. All right, so I just went through all the comments. There was a total of 443 of them. And in total, only six of you guys got it right, which is 1.35% of all comments. So I'm just going to read them off my phone. Archie Hamilton got it right. Train David YouTube got it right. CTNC17 got it right. Elijah Bombard got it right. Chaos07 got it right. And Malachi Joya got this one right too. I also have to throw in two other comments. They didn't get it exactly right, but they did mention it. This one right here by, I think, Merck Kurz. This one should be fun. I'm rooting for the Raiders to win, but the Bengals win this one. Well, you probably should have picked who you're rooting for there. And then I have to show this comment too by Ninja Dills because he said the AFC winner was the Raiders, which is correct. And the NFC winner was the Saints, which was not a bad guess. Both those teams made it really far. But I just had to show this anyways because I give props to him getting actually pretty close with that prediction. So it's time for the updated standings check. Now, this is still going by turn lasted the next episode i'm gonna fix it where turns lasted is not the reason why teams are above each other because it's kind of unfair and you'll see why in a second but first last place go figure it's the colts they're 06 and 0 but see the reason why the turns lasted system is kind of flawed because you can see the ravens are down here they're 7 6 and 7 which is not bad not good but still having seven wins should not be that low compared to having a team like with three wins two wins zero wins you gotta get the idea now but yeah three of the four afc north teams down here and also the bears giants bucks and falcons not too looking too good for these teams 23 to 6 it's surprising to see the Eagles this slow, but here they are. And then followed up by the Commanders, Lions, Rams, Jaguars. And then our first winner in Imperialism history is the Chargers. They're down here pretty low with 91 turns lasted, but 11 and 5, 4 records pretty solid. And after the Chargers, we're starting to get into teams who have lasted over 100 turns, starting with the Dolphins dead at 105, 5 and 1, and then the Vikings above them at 102. Next page is 15 to 8. The Cardinals are surprisingly high, even though they're 1, 6 and 2, and that's why this system's kind of flawed. Next up is the Packers, another winner, 105 turns lasted with a 12, 6 and 2 record. And they go to Saints, Bills, Seahawks, Texans are kind of high, Panthers, and then Patriots. But now for our top eight, it starts with the Titans at 123, 9, 6, and 4. Then the Bengals, the previous champion, with 132. Then the Jets and the Raiders, who just won at 140. And then the Broncos, the infamous Broncos, so all they do is expand. They have 142 turns lasted. Followed up by the Chiefs, which I'm surprised have not won one of these. And then you have the Niners and Cowboys, which have both have won one. Definitely the best teams in this. Cowboys by a long shot. 175 turns lasted and a 16, 6, and 6 record. That is a Amazing. But yeah, thank you guys for watching Imperialism number six. Stay tuned because I have more in store right where this came from. Anyways, see you guys next time.